this story I wanted to read you guys. Um, it's about a boy named Teddy Stollard. Some of you guys, I think, are starting to read it. But it's probably one of the most powerful stories that I've come across in my lifetime. And this is about somebody that had a big change of heart. Kind of repressed and ended up really having a huge impact on this person's life. Okay. I heard a story about a young lady who could hardly wait to become a teacher. Miss Thompson, from the time she was a little girl, couldn't think of anything she wanted to do but become a school teacher. She was in love with that career and educated herself, acquired a job, had done it for a few years. Started every school year, she would stand before the boys and girls and say, I love you all the same, which wasn't really true. Teachers do have favorites, you know. But what, worse, what was worse is that sometimes they just don't like some of the kids. Teddy Stollard happened to be a little boy that Miss Thompson did not like, and with good reason. He wasn't interested in school whatsoever. He was a deadpan, blank expressions on his face, glassy eyes, unfocused appearance, unkept hair, clothes musty. He wasn't attractive and most certainly was not likable. She marked Teddy's wrong answers with X's with a perverse pleasure. She put F's at the top of his papers with a flare. She should have known better because she had his records. They read first grade Teddy, shows promise with his work, his attitude, but poor home situation. Second grade, Teddy could do better, mother seriously ill, receives little help from home. Third grade, Teddy's a good boy, but too serious, a slow learner, mother died this year. Fourth grade, Teddy, very slow but well behaved, father shows no interest. Christmas came, all the kids brought their parents, Brought their presents and gathered around Miss Thompson's desk to watch her open all the gifts. Among the presents was one of Teddy, was one from Teddy, and she was surprised that, he, that, that, that she brought him. They brought her one. Teddy's gift was wrapped with brown paper, scotch tape, and on the paper was written for Miss Thompson from Teddy Stalin. When she opened it, one out fell this gaudy rhinestone bracelet with half the stones missing and a bottle of cheap perfume. The other boys and girls began to giggle and smirk and laugh, and Miss Thompson at least had enough sense to silence them by immediately putting on the bracelet, putting on the perfume. Holding her wrist up for them to smell, she said, doesn't it smell lovely? The children, taking their cue, agree with oohs and ahs. At the end of the day, all the children left except Teddy. He waited behind. He slowly came over to Miss Thompson's desk and said, Miss Thompson, Miss Thompson, you smell just like my mother, and her bracelet looks so nice on when Teddy left, Miss Thompson got down on her knees and asked God to forgive her. She said the next day when the children came to school that they would be welcomed by a new teacher. Her name was still Miss Thompson, but Miss Thompson returned to her first love of teaching. But even more than just being a teacher, she became an agent of God, for God. She now was committed to loving her children, doing things for them that would last long after she was gone. She helped the students, especially the slow ones and especially Teddy. By the end of the year, Teddy showed dramatic improvement. He caught up with most of the students even passed a few. Miss Thompson didn't hear from Teddy for a long time. And one day she received a note. Dear Miss Thompson, I wanted you to be the first to know that I would be graduating second in my class. Love, Teddy. Four years later, another note. Dear Miss Thompson, they told me that I'd be graduating first in my class, and I wanted you to be the first to know. The university hasn't been easy, but I liked it. Love, Teddy. Four years later, dear Miss Thompson, as of today, I am Theodore Stollard, MD. How about that? I wanted to be the first to know, and I'm getting married next month, the 22nd to be exact. I want you to come and sit where my mother would have sat if she were still here. You are the only family I have now. Dad died last year. Love, Teddy. Miss Thompson went to that wedding. She sat where Teddy's mother would have sat. She deserved to sit there. She had done something for Teddy that he would never forget. And neither would she. As how many of you were touched by hearing this story? Here's why I tell this story. You know, so many stories like it, right? Yeah. 
not to make us, I mean, obviously bring up some emotions, but the bigger reason is that, you know, so many times we've had, I mean, our parents are our greatest teachers, our greatest supporters, and we love them so much. And I'm hoping that, you know, you get those love letters to your parents when you go home today. Some of you already had them, that's awesome. But we think about our coaches, some of our teachers that we really had, had an impact on us. Think about even our brothers and sisters or our youth ministers. Our, you know, people that have really had a huge, profound impact on our hearts and our lives. <coughs> and if I asked you to name the last five people that have had a huge impact on your heart, you could probably tell me those people, right? If I, guys asked, if I asked you to guys tell me the last five presidents of General Motors, a lot of you probably couldn't tell me that though, right? Here's the thing, guys. We have people that are on fire that work for GM. We have people that are on fire that work for the church. We have people that are on fire that work for finding a cure to cancer. We have people that are on fire for every calling imaginable. And then there's some that you know work at those jobs that it's maybe just for the paycheck. So the idea, though, is to find that passion that we talked about. Guided by the Spirit, having the knowledge from the Spirit, to go out and have the biggest impact that we have that's possible, right? Just like this story here. That's, that's just one life, right? But that's huge. I mean, you make the difference in just one person's life, that's huge. 